And for today, let's just start here. Um, we will start with David Benai um, from Cambodia. Um, and in around uh, 45 minutes, Dave uh, Reuter will uh, kick it off with um, Let's Go Premium. So uh, he will we'll be talking about Power BI Premium uh, and uh, what it is and uh, what you can do uh, uh, with that. Um, but first, I want to uh, get your attention um, on the October meetup of uh, Power BI Days Netherlands. Um, we're all um, into, well, getting new people into the um, um, into the data world and, and presentation uh, world also. Um, so we contacted uh, Wong Fruhu, he's an old colleague of mine. Uh, if he was interested in speaking, uh, and he uh, would like to uh, share as much about uh, Power BI data models and how to, how to build the ultimate Power BI data model. So he will be a newcomer speaker uh, in October. The event is uh, already live, so you can sign up and uh, message you at the Power BI data model. But we are going to start with uh, OBI's new integrations in Excel. Let's uh, go over here. Um, and David Benham will be uh, will be sharing his knowledge. Uh, he began his career at uh, at Deloitte in London, and uh, he now has a data analytics training firm in Cambodia. Um, and in February of this year, he was awarded the MVP award in uh, in Office Apps and Services, actually. So not data platform. Um, apps and services. So he's coming from the analytical and cell world, and also in the Power BI. So David, uh, take it away. thank you, Nikki. All right, great. So uh, can everyone hear me? I'm going to share my screen. Let me know if you can see my screen, and let me know if uh, you can hear me. We can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. All right. Yeah. It's, uh, it's raining quite hard where I am, so uh, I just want to make sure that that's okay. All right. So today I'm going to talk about the integrations from Power BI to Excel. Uh, as Nikki said, I I have a consulting firm in Cambodia, and I have a YouTube channel under my name, David Benaim, and you can follow me on Twitter with that Dave Benaim as well. So. Uh, my my YouTube channel has uh, I've just hit 1,500 subscribers yesterday. It's quite new. I have all these sorts of apps. I'm not specific to any application. Um, I'm not specific to Microsoft. I love making videos on Zoom and Google Sheets as well. But I have quite a lot on Power BI and quite a lot on Power Query, and obviously Excel and PowerPoint as well. So uh, let's get started with some demos here. So. Um, uh, David, here. One, one question, please. Yeah. Um, if you could minimize the, um, the Teams um, window on top, on the bottom right. Uh, yeah. 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 Thanks. yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks for that, Nikki. So uh, what am I talking about the integrations with Excel? So there are uh, a, some brand new features just released, which allow data to be pushed from Power BI into Excel. So in the data tab here, you can get data from your organization, and this actually comes from Power BI. Uh, it says under here, powered by Power BI, as you hover over it. So I can have data on my products, on my staff, etc., and it will load that as I need it. So I'm going to show Thank you how to do you this. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. There's a little echo on your side. There's an echo on my side. Yeah. Um, all right, try without the microphone. Yeah. Uh, uh, it wasn't there that, uh, where we started, so. Is that better now? Hello, can you hear me? Is that better now? Uh, yeah. No, still a little echo. Nico, Nikki, I don't hear the echo. I think it might be on your side. On my side. Okay, sorry. Then, um, then it's it's my uh, my side. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Continue. No problem. So. What I can do is I can set out a list of places and I can go to the data tab and I have the ability to get data on the COVID rates. So this is not necessarily inside my organization, but it is coming from a Power BI place. 
Um, right. Sorry. Hmm. Sorry about that. Uh, all right, let me try this one. Yeah, there you go. So it's able to look these up. And these are actually the staff inside my organization. And I'm able to get from these people their, the branch they work in, extract their age, their gender, um, or all of these other things. So how many costs they've incurred in, in the work they've been doing. And I can just add it directly from there. Or I can click on the card here and also see it like that there. So I can see all the information directly from this person and I can extract certain data points uh, as needed as well just for that one. Or this sort of thing works quite a lot better if you make your data into a table. So another one that I am doing involves vegetables. So I'll show you how I do that. So I literally just type these in Power BI, uh, sorry, in Excel, and then I can go here and I can say that these are the products. And then it converts to linked data types. That's showing you it's loading. And then the same behavior, I can extract all of these. So for my products, what is the quantity on hand by kilos? Uh, what is the profit margin that I tend to sell, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I did say that it works better if you make your data in a table. So if I say, for example, this is product, I can then go to the insert tab and choose table. A feature that not many Excel users know, but it does lots and lots of things from formatting to formulas. It allows you to then much better, you can just click here and choose columns. It adds the column name as well. The other way you can add more columns is you can actually type in the formula. So you can say equals this, then put a dot, and then you can say any of these fields that you have pre-selected in Power BI. So you can say supplier, press tab, and that will give you the supplier there. Fortunately, this behavior doesn't have the column header, but if you prefer it through writing formulas, then it can work there. This is regular Excel data, so you can do whatever you want here. You can if you want to uh, make a pivot table here. So just like in the regular Excel, you can insert a pivot table in a new worksheet. And then you can say you want to see by supplier. Column one, two, three is not very useful there, but you can get it summed or averaged uh, using Excel pivot tables. Excel pivot tables are the predecessor in many ways to Power BI and Power Pivot. So yeah, you can also write your, write your own custom Power Pivot formulas in here. But I think the strength of this is not for the the Power BI super users is for the everyday Excel users that want to be able to quickly access data within their organization. Uh, it doesn't tell you if you have duplicates, so that is okay to add it. When it's a table like this, all you have to do is start writing and it gives you the extra amount. Uh, note that something that I often do is I select it and I go to conditional format and highlight duplicate values just to make sure that I don't have any duplicates, especially if you want to analyze this later on. So uh, data types in Excel have been released for a couple of years. It started with stocks and geography. So just to show you an example of the geography stuff, uh, if I click on here, it can do all of these things to convert it into this geography data type. And you can extract the birth rate, if it's applicable, the forested area, the population, a lot of different things like that. If you're wondering what the choice of these countries are, these are all the countries where I have uh, lived in my life, apart from Netherlands. I just thought that would be appropriate for today. <laughs> but yeah, you can get it to extract all of this data. This is not linked to uh, Power BI. This comes from directly within Excel researching this, a lot from the World Bank, some from Wikipedia, if you scroll here. This version has a little bit more than the Power BI stuff has for now, but I assume that's coming to Power BI. So if you want to, for example, uh, go here, 
you can see there's an image as well. You can also extract the image into the grid doing it like that. And they've just released some more features. So for example, you can also have nestings as well. So the subdivisions, I can navigate to those and then get for each of these, I can get further things subdivided there and then keep going. And if I want to add anything to the grid, I can add it like that and it will give me that, which is then expandable into uh, further data types. So for now, Power BI just allows you to get the data from one specific table, which confusingly Power BI calls a featured table, Excel calls a data type. So uh, that is one of sort of four ways to get data from Power BI into Excel. The others are a lot less sophisticated. So adding a new sheet in the get data part of your data tab, you also have from Power BI. And then this will look through your data sets uh, that you have access to. So anything that you're able to see via shared workspaces or anything like that. And let's go with casualties by selfie. <laughs> This is some fun data sets that I explore, explored at one time. So it then creates it into a pivot table. And I'm going to exit out of that. So then if I click inside my pivot table and I show the field list, I can say that I want to see the number of deaths by country. So I click on country and then I choose number of deaths like that. India is unfortunately the one with the highest number of deaths. You can then also divide further. You can go into type and get descriptions and things like that as well. So yeah, this is a way to sort of expand and get data from Power BI to Excel through a pivot table, but this is actually a Power Pivot uh, multi-table data set. All the relationships flow through uh, this summation thing, this is a list of all the measures. Uh, Excel combines it into one sub table. It's a very simple data set with two tables, just the dates and the, uh, and the data underneath there. So the third way you can do it is pretty much the same as the first one. In the insert tab and pivot table, you now have a drop down that says from Power BI. Uh, Excel Consulting is my company name, so that's why it's showing me that one. Again, it's basically the same idea. You just choose which one that you want. You see your endorsement on the side just to make sure that that is working okay. So uh, those are three ways. The third way is a way to be able to push data from Power BI service into Excel. So I will show you that in a little bit as well. But first I'm gonna show you the three ways to get it from Excel directly. So let's go through the whole process on how to get it converted from a Power BI desktop file into an Excel file. So to start off here, I have a Power BI file, very simple model. I just have three tables. I have two dimension tables, my employees and my vegetables, and then I have my sales table. Essentially the same as the one I just showed you. It's just that uh, I, I renamed the tables to make it sort of easier to run through the demo. So to show you here, I have uh, my dashboard that I built. Uh, <laughs> I really like these sort of picture charts with them for any Friends fans like that. Uh, if you want to know how to do it, I've actually done this through making a table and then putting this as a data bar where I don't fill it. You'll even notice that Joey is moving a little bit. <laughs> That's actually a GIF. Uh, I actually have a video explaining how to get data even from the website with the images into this. So if you're interested, you can check that out. Uh, I also like this layout where I have these sort of white shadows around it. It's a fairly new feature that's come to Power BI. When I do a light theme data set, I often use this sort of shadow uh, around it. I think it looks kind of pretty. So enough about that. What are we gonna do to make this work? So firstly, you need to make sure that you've switched on the preview feature, file, and then options and settings and options. And then in preview features over here, you do have an option for featured tables. So you need to switch that on. 
If it's the first time you're switching it on, Power BI will ask you to restart. I, I've already got it on, so I don't need to do that. So the way to actually make it a featured table, click on the model view, and then here you navigate to the table that you want. So we're gonna do this for employees, and we're gonna do it for vegetables. So here you have is featured table, switch on yes. You need to give it a description, it's a required field. And then you can choose the row label and the, and the key column. So the row label is what people type in Excel to get that to appear. Uh, the key column is something that is unique. Almost always, I think that both of them should be the same. The only time they wouldn't be the same is if there is maybe the odd duplicate entry and then you're able to link one as the other. Or maybe you have an ID column that is not very user friendly uh, that you put as the, as the key column. But in which case, a unique field is almost always good to have as a row label. Otherwise, Power BI isn't very good at guessing what it could be. Uh, so you set that up. Um, let me do it from scratch because this table, I've never done it. So I can switch on is featured table. And you see here it says column with a unique value. So you need to give it a description, sales data. And then you can say, well, what is this going to be? This could be the person, although that is not a unique value. Uh, whereas cost isn't either. So it needs to have unique values there can add an index column in Power Query to make that happen. So once you've done that, then uh, you're going to publish that to Power BI Online, set some features over there, and then it will upload into Excel. Now, just to show you a couple of nuances with this. So what happens if it isn't able to guess what you're saying? And that will sort of explain why it's important to choose uh, the right data set type. So let's say that you accidentally make a misspelling. So here I'm going to write, for example, egg, nog, or something. It's, this means it's looking, it can't find it. Eventually it says we can't find it here. So if it's close enough, then it will sort of find something relatively similar. It hasn't worked there. Yeah, and then eventually you can get it and select it here. Notice that that's duplicate, so it is selecting and highlighting it again. If you want to change it, if you think it's got the wrong one, you can right click on a cell and you can choose data type and change. So if this is, you said eggplants, but really you mean something completely different, uh, then you can change it there as well. And then it will change the wording over here, select. If you want to convert them back, so again, you can right click and you can choose to convert to text. Notice refresh is there as well. This does update live. So if your Power BI is updating online, then refresh will get it to uh, refresh over here as well. So press cancel and then you get these field errors because these are all formulas and they only work if there's a data type. I just pressed undo to get rid of that. Um, I do, yeah, let me try this again. So, yeah. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> By the way, uh, you may have noticed that before converting it, it says UK. And then after I convert it, it changes to Ukraine. So that is obviously an error, something to bear in mind. Uh, it's not very good at guessing the geography data types. If I add a new one that says UK, that actually will convert it to United Kingdom. But Power BI isn't that good with the data sets as it is. Uh, as I said, this does link through to the live COVID data. So I can get my total cases. Um, I can get my deaths. Although notice that if you make a mistake in the formula in Power BI, COVID cases yesterday, this is actually going to be wrong. So be aware that if you make mistakes in your DAX calculations, that flows through. 
Uh, for selfie deaths, uh, I do have some countries, but it doesn't work. David, I've got a question from uh, from Cheryl. Yep. Um, she um, um, wants to know um, what would be the reason um, that I can't see Power BI dataset from Get Data in Excel. Is that because it's a preview feature? Or? Okay, yeah, good question. I was going to get to that. Um, yeah, so there's a couple of reasons. Uh, reason number one is, as you say, is a preview feature. If I click here, it says preview from your organization. So you need to have uh, two things. So if you hit file and then account, you can see which version you have. So I have the beta channel. Um, it says version 2009. This means 2020 in the ninth month, which is September. So I get the pre-released version. So currently it's still in pre-release, which means that you need to subscribe to the beta channel to get the updates before they happen uh, in order to get that. So that's one reason. Uh, the second reason, and this is going to unfortunately affect a lot of people, is that uh, Microsoft have said this is only available for E5 customers. So you need to have Microsoft 365 apps for enterprise. And within that, you can have an E3 package or an E5 package. Uh, this feature is only available for E5. They may change that in future, but that's how they're rolling it out. So yeah, unfortunately that does affect a lot of people because uh, I'll explain that licensing a little bit more later on. Oh, great, thanks. So, We've got uh, one more question from uh, from Dave. Yeah, yeah, it's a comment on what you explained now. I think um, one extra thing might uh, um, block the the functionality, and that's the Power BI service tenant setting for for yeah these features. They they can be turned off or disabled. Yes, yes. I will go through all of those settings because there's quite a lot of them. So yeah, good good point. I will show those settings and what you need to be aware of in a second. Okay, all um, right. Yeah, all right. So here I have uh, two countries. I'm not sure Sweden is one. I'll do USA. I'll do um, uh, France as well. And talking about selfie deaths, uh, I have to extract data out of selfie deaths. So what I did here was I allocated the data featured data type to be the uh, the way that they the way that they were killed. <laughs> um, but it does recognize in India, and it's giving me a lot of options because these are all the people who have died in India from there. Uh, in France, it's not found anything. In USA, it's found a fewer number, but it has found them. So I can select whichever one that I want and do it like that. In India, I can select another one. Notice that with this data set, I can get a description. So this is all related to one instance of how these people uh, took a selfie and then uh, died. Just to show you what that data looks like, uh, casualties by selfie. So here is the output where I have the number. I have some hover over report page tooltips. But what I did just for demo purposes, which is probably what you wouldn't do, is in selfie deaths, I made the feature table to be based on the, the, the key column is the index column, and then the category is the row label. And category is how they died. So Category is looking at transport, fall, drowning, firearm, etc. So yeah, that is a kind of obscure setting, but it's just to showcase how that works. Uh, the other thing worth noting is that th you get this symbol next to the ones that are relevant to the featured table. So the index and the category one is there, and that's why I get this symbol showing up like that. Um, all right, so let's go back to our demo and follow that through from Power BI here. So after I've set the featured data sets, um, this does not work with measures. So I'm going to do something that's going to probably annoy the, uh, the good practice Power BI people in this room, in this call. 
but it's the only way for the moment to get this to work. So you need to actually go to this and you need to, as it happens, a, a measure is not good enough. You need to add a calculated column. And if I want to get the kilograms on hand or total kilograms sold, I need to add a calculated column that is just equal to a measure and is just showing me the output there. This is the only way to do it for now. I know it's bad practice, but if you want this to appear in your featured table in Excel, then this has to be the way that you bring it in. Uh, something that you might want to consider is having a table that is a featured table that is maybe not the one that leads through to Power BI. So maybe it's somewhat of a hidden table and it only is there for Excel purposes because you're doing the bad practice that means that people could end up using Power BI incorrectly. But if you want measures to show up, you need to make them into calculated columns for now. That might change in future. Uh, that is an exception if you get data from this one. That only applies if you use the data type selection there. Right, so once you've got it, and you're ready to get this into Excel. You can just publish it, save changes, ask you which workspace you need to go through. And I'm just going to do this one. This is a blank site. I'm just going to publish it to that one. I'm going to open it in Power BI Online. And there are some things that you want to uh, change here. So as was mentioned before, there are some admin controls that you need to be aware of. Uh, I actually have a YouTube video that I am making on this exact tool that runs you through the process. So it will be a 10 to 15 minute video, including all of the things you need to be aware of for uh, publishing it. So you need to uh, go into the admins portal and then go to tenant settings. And you might not have access to this, but you need to get someone to do it. So a few things you need to have. I learned this the hard way. It's not documented, but it only works if experience. Uh, old workspace experience will not work. Uh, when I actually had to convert my old workspace into the new one, so make sure that's enabled. Uh, then as you go along, there's a few others to be aware of. So you have these two export data and export to Excel. So best to enable these to make it work. And then there is another one here that says, uh, featured tables that I cannot seem to find. Yeah, allow connections to featured tables. You need to switch this on. And really important, you need to switch on endorsements. Uh, so certification, you need to make sure this is enabled. So those are the key setting changes. Uh, certification turn on featured uh, new workspace and the two ways of exporting data. So switch all of those on, enable them, and then go back into your, uh, your data set here and choose data set settings. Because as I said, it needs to have an endorsement which is certified. So this is only for the linked data types. Uh, this you don't need to certify it if you just use the get data function, but if you want it to appear, you need to switch on this as certified, press apply. And then from my experience, it doesn't happen immediately. You just have to sort of wait, close Excel, reopen it, and then eventually it will show up here. So I haven't worked out exactly how long it takes. I'm sure it is changing as we go along. Uh, that's effectively how you can get it to work. Um, you have organization, so it can look across all of these different things. 
if you haven't specified which one to do. Obviously, if you have ambiguity, then it's not going to work there. And more from your organization will make you just choose how it can work there. There is really, really big application in this. Uh, everyone pretty much in your organization is able to get these same data sets. Now, I say in your organization, what I mean is who, are, who have access to the workspace. So anyone who has access to the shared workspace uh, is able to do that. Uh, it does also incorporate row-level security. It didn't at the beginning, but it does now. Uh, there's a couple of useful resources to be aware of. So, yeah, this one, Access Power BI Featured Tables in Excel. So this is how to use it from the Excel point of view. And it has a lot of little nuances that I'm not going to go into in as much detail. Like, apparently, it can only look for a maximum of 100 rows. Uh, this is out of date. Featured tables in Power BI that use the following capabilities aren't shown in Excel. Row level security data sets. That's been superseded by uh, the June release, which now says uh, RLS is now supported in featured tables. So a little bit out of date, but it's a pretty comprehensive guide. And this other thing, which I will send a link to both of these because they're really useful. This is all the steps you need to do in Power BI uh, desktop. So yeah, so these are both really good. The online stuff, the step things you need to turn on online are less obvious. So hopefully the video that I make will go through that and make that um, sort of make sense so people can access to it. Yeah. So whilst we're in Excel, I am a, a little bit of an Excel junkie. So I did want to show you a couple of other things that you can do in Excel better than Power BI. Um, Excel has uh, different visualization types that are not available in the out of the box Power BI. Uh, you can get custom visuals for a lot of these, but a lot of organizations don't allow that. So what I have done here is I am able to select this data, go to insert and choose a box and whisker chart. I love box and whiskers. I think they are so, so useful. And I really shudder at the fact that they don't exist in Power BI. Um, as I said, if the client allows it, I will often get them uh, from as a custom visual, but that's not always the case in my engagements. So with this one, um, What's it showing you? Uh, this is an outlier, which means that the interquartile range uh, times 1.5 is greater than the top quartile. And that's how it shows that. Uh, I tend to like to show these as a black outline, so it's a little bit clearer. But yeah, I love this. This is the mean, this is the median, this is the top and bottom quartile, the highest and the lowest. Uh, another one that I like is the Pareto chart. So I think this is a really good feature in Excel in general, it even supersedes the needs to go through pivot tables. So the Pareto chart, it adds up all your data. So it effectively is like creating a pivot chart. It automatically sums this up and it creates this cumulative line and it sorts it. So it's very difficult to sort charts in Excel. Power BI is much easier, but I like that it does that automatically for you. And sometimes I do this just to take away the Pareto line, literally to just get it sorted and get it showing uh, like this without having to go through a pivot table. You can even apply slices to these by making the data into a table. And then inserting a slicer into that. So I can get here, the slicer is able to filter the data that you're seeing like that. So that can be a quite good way of handling your data there. I actually do this quite frequently uh, and I did want to show you. Another one that I wish Power BI had, we all know it has the buttons, but Excel, if you want something more elaborate with the buttons, then inside Excel you have thousands of different icons that you can choose. And I love these because Excel PowerPoint has it built in and treats them like shapes. 
So if you want something like a drill, it work <laughs> in the search. But whatever it is you choose, you can just sort of add them. Uh, you can also have stock images. So very, very new feature, but PowerPoint Excel has thousands of stock photos that you can reuse. Probably wouldn't use them in Excel as much as PowerPoint, but they are pretty awesome. These two, I use them less. But yeah, icons have been around for about three years now. So what is cool about these is that you can uh, format them. So Excel treats them like shapes, which means you can give them any color that you want, give them an outline. Uh, you can even convert it to shape. If I want to make each of these balloons different, then I can do that. And then eventually you're able to export this as well. So then you can just right click here and save as picture. You can save as a PNG file or an SVG file for a vector image if you want. And then just take it from there into Power BI. This is a thing that I do quite often. Uh, probably not the stock images, although great for backgrounds if you like uh, faded background images into your data as well. Yeah, great. So those are a couple of tips, um, some extra chart types that are in Excel but not in Power BI that I really like. Uh, you have some other ones here, like the waterfall I find is better in Excel actually than Power BI. And tree map, you have the sunburst, you don't have in Power BI. I personally don't really use it very much. I don't really particularly like the tree map either. But yeah, there are some things that you can get on board with. And sparklines, sparklines you don't get in Power BI, but you can get them in Excel. All right, so uh, that's what I wanted to show you. Uh, let me just summarize my slides. So yeah, uh, I explained a bit about me. I am an, a chartered accountant. I actually blog about Excel and Power BI for the UK Accounting Institute, which is called ICAW. I became an MVP in uh, February. Actually, when I met Nikki last year, neither of us were MVPs, and now we both are. So that's a cause for celebration. I have done corporate training in Excel and PowerPoint for over 1,800 people. And my company, Excel Consulting, has done uh, work with 120 organizations. I'm doing some Power BI projects at the moment with Cambodia, uh, which is where I live, a lot of nonprofits here. Uh, but also in Australia and UK. So the settings to apply. Um, there are four ways to do this. So you have Analyze Excel that's directly from Power BI service. That's been around for a long, long time. From Excel, you have uh, Get Your Data from Data Types or New Pivot Table or Get Data. This is by far the most exciting one. And the requirements are in Power BI. It's a preview feature. You do need an Office 365 E5 license, and in Excel, it's still a beta version release. Uh, Power BI Online admin settings you need to set up, featured table, turns on modern workspaces, make your data set a certified data set, like I showed you how to do that, and then you need to turn on export to data and export to Excel as well. Uh, great. So, yeah. That takes me to the end of what I want to show you. I hope you enjoyed that. Again, I'm David Benayim, and feel free to check out my YouTube channel. I have a lot of videos. I have a playlist for Excel, for Power Query, for Power BI, and other stuff that I love. I love using Sway, Planner, uh, Bookings, any of the obscure stuff that's in your Office 365 you never clicked on. <laughs> um, I have lots of videos on that. Yeah. All right. I've added your uh, YouTube channel in the chat also, so it's clickable. Yes. Any questions in the chat? Um, no, there's, there's nothing uh, Nothing more now. <laughs> did I spot a pie chart? Yes, <laughs> yes, you did. I don't tend to use them. The only time I use it is when I've got binary sort of yes and no. I think yeah. that it works quite well when it's filled and not filled like that. If I have three or more, then I tend to not use them. So sorry about that, Mark. 
<laughs> for, for you, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, only thanks. for this time. Ah, oh, thanks for thanks for letting me off. <laughs> and technically speaking, this is a donut chart, so. Yeah, I guess these are sort of pie charts on the countries. Yeah, but, yeah on yeah. the on the map, that's the, that's a pie chart. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So as I said, I am releasing a YouTube video on how I got this to work, which is sort of more concise um, and a different environment. If you want to relearn how that works. Uh, yeah, the licensing is annoying because you could actually have Power BI Premium for your organization and still not get access to this feature. You could be paying yeah. the tens of thousands of dollars, Power BI Premium, and if you don't have E5 as well, then you wouldn't have access to this. Uh, the MVP community is trying to suggest that that's not a good approach and Microsoft should rethink that, but for now that's what they've announced. Okay, it's it's good advice, I think. Um, yeah, and it, it's a good uh, bridge to uh, the next session because that will be about uh, Power BI Premium. So. Uh, mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, Dave will do that sharing. session. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Dave and Dave. Um, thanks, uh, David, for for this uh, session. It was great. I really liked the uh, the tip about um, using icons in Excel uh, to to export them and um, and using that to uh, yeah to to uh, to make buttons, for example, in Power BI. Yeah, That's yeah, cool yeah. One. I use that all the time. I wish Power BI had the the same ones that Excel had, <laughs> at least. But yeah, for now it doesn't. Okay. So um, thank you very much for uh, for having uh, for joining us. Um, we will have a short break for a few minutes, and then we will continue with uh, uh, with Dave uh, about uh, Let's Go Premium.